on duty what's up people some of you guys noticed that I haven't been posting much lately I've been really busy with work and uh, home life this being the summer months I'm sort of busy making memories with the kids so you know it all ev evolves around the kids so uh, that's where I've been and also I'm sort of in crunch time here I got two months to prepare for a uh, 72 mile hike uh, across the Sierra Nevadas going from west to east and hopefully summiting the uh, largest peak in the lower 48 states, Mount Whitney at 14,400 and something feet. So it's going to be me and uh, one uh, buddy of mine. So I've been spending a whole lot of time just rethinking my gear, my strategy, uh, all that stuff. Uh, in preparation for this so uh, that's my whole kit right there not fully complete and there's some stuff that's going to change before uh, kickoff date there towards uh, mid-September that's where we plan to go out there and uh, along with that I've been doing a lot of physical uh, preparation as well working out and stuff so uh, I got this machine here really cheap 150 bucks for a complete machine here so uh, I scored on that and of course I'm doing the weight vest. Right now I'm up to 60 pounds on the weight vest and uh, I step on this thing 30, uh, 30 minutes a day. Uh, sometimes twice a day, 20 minutes in the morning and then 30 minutes at night after I do a, uh, a full workout strength training. So that's in preparation for the hike. So at this point it's time to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. We're going to see what uh, is viable out in the real bug out or bug in or whatever and what is crap. I'll be taking along some extra gear to do some testing out there and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, 72 miles is going to tell us a whole lot of things and the whole thing will be documented uh, day by day of what's going on, what we did, what we ate. We're going to be testing our physical abilities uh, the food choices we bring out there and I'm gonna try something totally off the wall I'm gonna try to bring a ketogenic diet out there with me it's almost like a paleo diet but more hardcore into the heavy fats and and protein mostly fats really so that's gonna be a strategy that I'm gonna be trying out on trying to convert my body or adapt my body in, into a uh, fat burning machine. I have to go fully into nutritional ketosis and while I make the video about that and everything I'll explain exactly what's going on with that and if it's viable or not. A whole lot of theory here and we're gonna put it to the test to see what works for me personally. A 46 year old man determined to get home Alright guys, uh, this is the rest of the vid is just me rambling about the ideas popping up a few months ago 
uh, while I was out on a, on a hike. The, yeah, this is all fun for me, and I'm testing out my gear, and it's my get-home bag gear and everything, but I've been entertained with the thought of uh, if I do need to bug in, instead of coming through the usual route, which would be the valley floor over there where most of the cities are at, and most of the population, maybe, depending on situational awareness, Maybe coming from the backcountry could be uh, a better solution. I mean, if I go through the valley and there's like, let's say a shit hit the fan and we're two, three, four days into it, I'm going to be in stealth mode anyway, going, you know, slow, try not to be seen and stuff like that. Even though it's a more direct route to get home and uh, relatively flat until I get to the foothills, uh, I still need to sort of kind of duck and hide uh, to get home uh, from the, you know, I'm, I'll be going through people's home turf. I mean, the only, the only home turf that you see out here is for bears and mountain lions, and that's it, and they're no problem. Not only that, if I'm being tailed, which I doubt, but if, if let's say somebody does want to follow me or whatever, uh, if they're not prepared, they're going to die out there for sure. I mean, look at this. If you're not prepared, hypothermia is just going to eat you alive up here. Especially overnight. And that's the whole reason why I came up here is to test my winter gear. Winter setup. Because uh, uh, I can't really get much hot, uh, colder down where I live at. It gets up to 32 degrees, and I already know that my gear works very well at 32 degrees. I want to go down into the 20s and possibly teens, and that's and that is the uh, the average for the Sierra Nevadas is the the, the 15th, maybe single digits uh, for four, five, six months out of out of the year. But uh, every other time, it's either hot or uh, down to the 40s or 50s, maybe. So if I, if I could withstand tonight up here at 20 degrees or let's say if it goes any colder, then that proves to me that I'm good to go. My, my system is solid for cold weather, even though really I hate the cold weather. I am a fair weather camper. You wouldn't catch me dead up here, but look at me now. I'm up here. And that goes to show, you know, the confidence that you need to have with your gear and, and researching all your stuff make sure that your gear is is up to par and not just take you know uh, internet experts advice I mean just consider the sources and check and check all your references and recheck them I by no means am I am an expert I am the last guy you should take advice from uh, the first 20 years of my life was in New York City <laughs> and uh, I didn't go anywhere into the woods until I joined the Marine Corps for almost seven years. And the only places we went was uh, the desert. So, But the, the military, at least for rank and file uh, people, you know, servicemen and women, uh, they're pretty much provided what they need to, to withstand the cold out here. But if you're like in special forces or some you know high speed low drag unit like that, then yeah, you're gonna get extra training and stuff like that. But for rank and file, you know, me being a radio tech, nah, I get the the hand me downs of everything, and we'll come up here for like maybe two or three days, and and that's my extent of uh, wilderness survival training. So, just because you're in the military doesn't mean you're an expert in winter survival or, or general badass and that was a good exercise in winter camping for me at least I'm this California is not like northern Minnesota or Finland up there Sweden and stuff so I'm not gonna get that extreme temperature so I'm not gonna train for those extremes maybe zero degrees maybe but that's as cold as it gets up here zero degrees maybe up in the uh, east over there higher elevation I was up at uh, 8,300 something like that and it wasn't bad it wasn't bad at all there was no wind just a slight breeze
but enough to, to kind of bother me at night. But uh, I strategically placed myself on the other side of the lookout where the lookout was actually blocking the wind from, from me. So I was using the terrain to my advantage. That's pretty much in the, this exercise is, is, you know, working with nature instead of fighting it. If I were to cross those mountains and stuff, I would camp over on the meadows in the bottom there. On the southern western slope of the, uh, of any hill or mountain up there. So that's where it gets the most sun and heats up more than it does on the east side. So I'm using that as my advantage to regulate my temperature and stuff. Okay, so why am I doing this? Number one, fun. If you're prepared for it, this is all fun. There was a saying Yankee Pepper said in one of his videos. You could like them or hate them, whatever. I like watching his videos. Lots of information. But uh, he had a thing on camping the BCWA over there in Minnesota or something. His kit that he uses to go out there. And he was talking and this one remark that he made really hit home for me and it was uh dude if, if you're having a hard time camping you're doing it wrong if you're having a hard time hiking any extended period of time you are doing it wrong go back and reevaluate your system and make it right so the uh, videos in question were, were really informative to begin with but uh, that right there was the clincher for me at least. So like I said, it's pretty much to come out here and have some fun with as minimal gear as I can or the lightest gear that I can within reason. There's a point where if you get too light it becomes a, a liability more than it does help in my opinion. But anyway, sometime in September, me and a buddy of mine, old Marine Corps buddy, we got plans to go and hike Mount Whitney, which is the tallest peak in the lower U.S. continental 48 states. And we're starting from the west side of the Sierra Nevada mountains going across, not the John Muir Trail. I personally don't have the time to do that. Uh, that's 211 miles going one way and that roughly is going to take three weeks and I just definitely don't have that type of time to do that. But we're going to take this other shorter trail that comes cuts across called the Sierra High Trail and uh, pretty much this is January. I'm sort of like in training phase for that. So that's going to take an average of seven days. It's 72 miles from Trailhead to Mount Whitney, then back to the Whitney portal on the other side, one way. So I'm testing out my gear for that. Also, uh, my physical fitness, make sure I make it. Uh, it's 14,000 and something feet high, so I try to get used to acclimatization uh, as far as uh, altitude. My buddy Chuck, he uh, he just completed search and rescue, volunteer search and rescue up there in Oregon State. That's where he lives at. And uh, he's going to really be a, an asset. But uh, he's going to be capable. Hopefully, oh, ice pack. <laughs> Hopefully I will be capable. And that's why I'm doing this now. So I can hang. We're both roughly the same age. I'm 46, he's probably a year or two younger. So, but we're still young enough to kick some ass out there, that's for sure. I don't think there's many 20 year olds could do, that could do the trick that I just did yesterday. Not slamming anybody, but that's just the truth. Another reason is to kind of take you guys on my journey here on these trials and you know going out little by little to show you what a what a newbie is going through see I'm no expert in this I've only been doing this for like four years so 
everything that I'm doing is a new experience. You could take that back and say, well, this guy's new and he had this, that, and the other problem. Uh, I gotta change up my way or avoid what he's doing or mimic what I'm doing to uh, help you in your particular journey. Because like I said, to me, this is going to be fun going out hiking to a remote fishing spot and doing some fishing, camping. There's a, quite of a bit of an undertone of prepping in it as well. Uh, hiking back home when the grid goes down or societal collapse or something like that. So, you know, it's all good. It's all training, no matter what. All right. So far as a personal footnote as to my you know the performance my performance so far and everything yeah there's a few things I need to improve on cardio seems to be okay I'm surprised I always suck in cardio but considering the pitch of that climb and the distance it wasn't that bad and the high elevation where there's less air but I still need to work out that's a constant thing I need to work out my legs a lot more uh, get the strength up and endurance. That's the main thing With that in mind adjust your tactics 